high sitters, these short high balls that we all get when we construct the perfect point. From time to time, we all miss them. And it's the worst feeling in tennis. Why? Because you just did everything right to get to the final stage of that rally. And it is time to collect. It is time to kill, to crush that ball. And you end up with nothing? Welcome back to my channel. Mario here. And today I am going to teach you how to hit high sitters. But before we get to that, please hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. It will be greatly appreciated. Here we go. High short sitters. First point I would like to emphasize is for you to understand what is happening on the other side. If you just hit a great shot to the corner and you see your opponent scrambling to barely get to that ball, then you should start anticipating that that ball is going to be short or an easy shot for you to put away. So at that point, you need to start taking a couple of steps forward to get there early to be able to hit the ball when it's still above the level of the net. With that said, there are a lot of Nadals out there who are great at defending. So yes, as soon as you hit that great shot, take a couple of steps forward, but don't completely commit to go in because you think a sitter is coming. Some of these players are so good at defending, they can create offense out of defense and almost hit a winner on you when they are defending. So you take a couple of steps forward so you don't commit too much. And if the ball is coming pretty good, you're able to retrieve and continue the rally and construct the point again so maybe you can get the sitter a little later. Also very important is for you to pick your favorite shot to hit. 99% of the people likes to hit their forehand when they get a high sitter. But every now and then you find somebody that is more comfortable hitting a backhand, so they're going to go and hit a backhand. So even though most people love to hit a forehand in that situation, understand what your favorite shot in that moment is and hit that shot. My next point is understand your distance. Very important that you understand that when you get to that sitter, you better have the right distance to the ball because if you are all cramped up, then it's going to be almost a certain miss. When you see the ball, do not run a straight line to the ball. You want to curve around the ball so when you get there, you are away from the ball and you feel comfortable hitting it. So again, do not run straight to the ball. You need to go around as you start to run. So instead of going straight to that ball, you need to kind of take a beeline around the ball so you can get there and have the perfect distance to hit the ball. And also, as I mentioned in other videos, the left hand helps a lot when it comes down to adjusting for distance. The ball wouldn't go over the arm, it needs to be around the arm. So when you gauge in the distance, make sure the ball is gonna be a little far from the tips of your fingers. As you are moving to that ball and you are gauging the distance as you're moving forward, at the same time, you need to start preparing the racket. So whether it's a forehand or a backhand, you need to start preparing the racket. So do not run to that ball with the racket in front and when you get there, try to rush the string. So you get to the ball, you have the right distance, your bracket is ready to go forward and hit it. You need to set up your feet. One of the most common mistakes of people hitting high sitters is that they don't set up when you get there. They run straight to the sitter. You do not want to do this as it is very difficult to hit the ball as you are basically in the middle of a step as you're running through the ball. You need to stop, set up, and hit the sitter. Now, as you run around to get the distance as you're moving forward, when you start to get there, use adjustment steps. Very important because it's gonna be very hard to 
gauge the distance with a big step. When you get to be about three or four feet from the point where you're gonna make contact with the ball, little steps will take you to that point. That is very important, so use your adjustment steps to take you to a precise place where you're going to hit the ball. All these steps are hugely important. You really can't skip one and think that it's going to work for sure. It might, of course it might. Sometimes you see pros running straight through a sitter just because they just been playing tennis a thousand million hours and they can actually wing it like that. But the best advice I can give you is don't skip any of these steps. So set up really well before you hit the sitter. Another thing that you need to understand is whether you are more comfortable with an open stance or a neutral stance or a closed stance. You need to understand, you need to know yourself, what are you more comfortable with? Hitting an open stance, a neutral, a closed stance. So you need to understand what stance is your favorite stance to use. A little detail I like to emphasize once you get your stance is if you're righty, of course, if you're lefty, everything is inverted. Let's say you're hitting a forehand and it's an open stance. When you hit the sitter, this right leg kicks back a little if you hit an open stance. If you hit a closed stance, you're gonna see the right leg as you hit the ball, kick back right there. Very important that you do this because it holds the position that you set up with and it keeps you during that small jump you take because you will take a little jump as you are still moving forward. It will keep your position stable. Because you have your distance, your body is going to feel like you're falling into the shot. That is super important because you don't wanna get to a sitter and all of a sudden you're there and you're about to hit it and you feel like you're cramped up and you have to move backwards a little or you have to lean backwards. If you have the right distance, you're gonna feel like you can lean into the shot, catapulting you forward towards the net, which is what you want. As you know, if you hit a great shot, a great sitter, the next shot is gonna be very defensive. Then you'll be on top of the net to put the ball away. So, okay, you're hitting the sitter. You checked out all the boxes. You anticipated the sitter, check. You gauged the distance to the ball, check. You prepared on the way to the ball, check. You set up when you got there, check so now let's understand how you actually hit the ball if you have some kind of a modern forehand modern or next gen forehand you do a windshield wiper motion when you hit a ball part of the windshield wiper that hits that ball is not this part obviously because you want to hit that ball about eye level maybe a little higher the part of the windshield wiper that we have on the next gen forehand or modern forehand will hit that ball here and that ball, instead of spinning completely like this, it's gonna spin more like this, in this direction. You need to be aware of that because if you're trying to hit that ball in an upward motion, it's gonna be almost impossible. So you go across and that hits the ball a little bit like this. You need to keep that in mind because that spin, if you can visualize that, it's gonna be much better for you when you hit the ball and it will be a much more aggressive shot because you know lifting the ball and swiping almost across as you hit the ball. Another point I'd like to make is you don't need to bring the racket completely down to hit that sitter as the ball is already above the level of the net. So there's no need to get under that ball obviously. What you need to do is basically crush that ball down. So this motion across will do just that. So now, please put yourself in your opponent's shoes. He just gave you a high ball around the service line and is shoulder high. Your opponent thinks at this moment they almost have zero chance. They are retrieving backwards because no one, when they are defending and produce a short high sitter, are going to go forward. They start to go backwards just to see if they can have a little room and more time to retrieve the ball that is coming. So understand their frame of mind. It is not necessary for you to hit the fastest ball you can hit. It is okay if you can hit an eight out of 10 speed wise ball in your range. So don't go for a huge shot. Pick your spot, go for an eight out of 10 and be ready to put away an easy volley just in case they get to it. Chances are if your opponent is somewhat experienced, they will pick a side 
they will either go to the forehand or the backhand. If they guess right and you hit a 100 mile an hour forehand, they're gonna be there anyway. So just pick your spot. It's better that you hit a better spot and hit an eight out of 10 power wise shot than to hit it a 10 out of 10 as fast and hard as you can get it and hit it in a bad spot. And obviously my last piece of advice is you just hit a great offensive shot. You need to be ready to go forward into the net. Most likely you're gonna get an easy volley. Don't let that one drop. Make sure you catch that one above the level of the net as well and put that one away. Also, not 100 miles an hour, but just hit it softly for an angle and almost 100% of the times that is going to be a winner. I hope this helped you a lot to understand how to crush high ball setters. There's a lot of information in this video, so take it one step at a time and little by little in a couple of months, you will be very happy with your results. If you like the information you just listened to, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. My name is Mario. You can do it.